So there's always a lot of talk about film adaptations in the fantasy genre, but what about video game adaptations? It's a lot rarer, it doesn't happen quite as often. In fact, I'm kind of blanking on an example. There's June. Land of sand. Maybe there's a reason this is a bad idea. <laughs> However, I have come up with a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different fantasy books I think would make fantastic video games. But I've also got pictures on exactly what type of game I want from each of these. And I did try and mix it up a bit so it's not all just open world RPGs because that works really well for the fantasy genre. And let's just get into the list. Let's, let's look at the books. Let's look at the, the, the video books. First of all, the book that made me want to create this video, The Combat Codes. Alexander has talked in depth of how he has taken inspiration for this series from uh, video games like the Final Fantasy series, as well as other older RPGs. So as part of his launch for the Combat Codes, he put up this video game trailer, which I thought was awesome. I love 8-bit art, I think it's absolutely stunning. I love to see the creative ways that people are marketing books. And it got me thinking about wanting to create video game adaptations for books. However, given the school academy type trope mixed with the combat style being very one-on-one -on -one sparring, I thought that this could make a really interesting RPG like those old Final Fantasy games. However, instead of turn-based combat, it could utilize a beat-em-up type combat. So sticking with the old pixel art or maybe doing the more 2.5D up-to-date version that the likes of Octopath Traveler uses. We can have cutscenes of the different characters in the academy and you could have a rank for your class or your team and you can challenge other teams to fights and then you get into the sort of tournament type beat em up style combat. A bit like Streets of Rage or Street Fighter or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. Orbit, you should open a, a, a gaming part of the company. I would buy that. Can you tell that I like that the mic's a lot closer now? I got a boom arm. So the audio quality should be a bit better. I swear I'm not going to turn this into an ASMR channel though. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, this also seems like a really obvious choice is having legends and lattes. You might be thinking, well, what can you do with legends and lattes? You're not going to get any combat in that. Are you though? I imagine this is a type of Animal Crossing Stardew Valley type cozy game where you play as Viv but you do have to do some adventuring into the mines and caves to get supplies to build your coffee shop and then even once it's built you could have a huge recipe of different ingredients that you need to get for each treat or drink that helps improve the rank of your coffee shop and bring in more guests and then you make more sales and you get more money and you're able to upgrade the shop get more workers maybe expand the building just a really nice cozy game i really enjoyed animal crossing and something like this with also the adventuring side to it i think it could be a lot of fun hey tor you should open again nah, <laughs> i'm not gonna do this with everyone next up we have the shadow of the gods now the really obvious connection here is god of war i imagine this to be a very god of war type game however perhaps instead of this more linear game style you could have it more skyrim open world and instead of just being kratos you could be a whole band of warriors takes on quests improve their gear level up takes harder quests as well as dealing with this main plot line that is the bloodsworn saga the difficulty with this is it is multiple point of view and this type of game you don't really swap point of view so perhaps you could rework the narrative narrative to run into some of these other characters more often and then through cutscenes we can learn more about this bigger plot that's happening in the Bloodsworn saga. Or, 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 you could have an Orca DLC where you play through the events of the game but from Orca's perspective and her hunt to save her son. I would buy that and then I would buy the DLC. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. I loved God of War, that was a great game. And Skyrim is one of my favourite games of all time. Now at the start of this video I did mention Dune. There is already a Dune game, however it looks like this. So we could be Dune upgrade with that franchise. 
I think Dune would make a really good strategy game, a bit like Civilization. It's not really the type of game that I play, so I'm not that familiar with some of the nuances between the different franchises. However, I do imagine that Dune would make a fantastic just civilization builder, especially in outer space where you could include colonizing planets, fighting off invaders, managing troops and food and money and spice. Again, the narrative would need to be reworked slightly to make it fit this type of format. However, I think that could be a lot of fun. Manage your own galaxy. Next up, we have Flames of Mira. Now, I think Flames of Mira would make a terrific old school PS2 generation type game in the style of the older God of War games or the Prince of Persia games. This more linear level style with some platforming elements and maybe some puzzles mixed in with the combat. I think would just fit Ig and his world really, really well. As Ig is trying to take care of Sorello and his two kids, he has to work his way through these tunnel systems that the world all live in, fighting off all these strange creatures and enemies. I don't even think you would need to do that much to the story to make it fit this type of format, because it is very much a quest adventure where there's a lot of traveling and moving between different places. I feel like it's just meant for that style of game. Even the combat itself I think would translate really well to that sort of God of War PS2 era of combat. Combat. I'm going to include this next one because there is already a fan game and it looks really really cool and that is Mistborn. This sort of open world but more maybe Assassin's Creed style where you have a marker on the map that you need to go to to continue the story would work really really well for Mistborn and being able to manage your levels of metal by buying it from different vendors. That would give the combat a level of strategy so if you're coming up to a big boss or something you'll know that okay this boss seems to be very this type of fighting style so what would really work against him? Which metals should I bring into this fight? And let's be honest, just trying to fly around Lutherdell would be a lot of fun. Like I said, there is a fan version already out there. It's not finished and it is just in video format. However, I'll link it below because it looks really good. Hey Sanderson, you should open a game. And last, but certainly not least, we have Skyward. And I know that's two sandals, especially in a row. I should have structured this video a bit better, but <laughs> they're two very different game ideas, okay? I think this would make an absolutely terrific flight simulator, obviously. Being able to fly through space and shoot down the Krell? Is it the Krell? It's been a while since I've read this series. It is the Krell. Good memory, Andrew. As waves of them come and attack the planet, but equally you could also have a more exploration style, a bit like the Star Wars game uh, Jedi Fallen Order, where Spencer could be going through the caves as she does at the start of the book, collecting different materials to upgrade her ship and finding Doomslug and all the things that that ties into. Equally, a bit like combat codes, you could have Spencer going to class and add a kind of school system there as well. But the main focus in this game for me is really the flying aspect and shooting down the Krell mixed in with the cave exploration, especially at the start of the game and then maybe they, she could be exploring other places once we get into content from the future books. I'm trying to keep this spoiler free in case that wasn't clear. <laughs> it could be a No Man's Sky type situation where you can just get in your ship, fly off, and land in different places. Also a bit like the upcoming game Starfield. Hey Sandra. <laughs> it's a dumb joke, stop doing it. And thank you very much for watching. This is a shorter video. I didn't want to bang on too much about these conceptual games. <laughs> However, I did have a lot of fun just imagining these up. But I do think it's an interesting discussion because there are a lot less adaptions to video games than there is to the screen. Originally, I thought there, it might be because games take so long to produce now. I mean, you're looking at most games taking five plus years but then I thought creating a fancy adaption in film or TV easily takes that as well with the amount of CG and development to the visuals in fancy so I'd be interested to hear why you think that there seems to be a lot less video games taken from books than there is film and TV. Is it just because narratively perhaps they're harder to convert to the video game format than they are to a film. Either way, I would love to see more books turn into games. But yes, thank you very much for watching. A raw book. I have a mic now that's closer to my face. That's quite cool. Outro. Oh, and let me, let, I forgot to ask. Let, let me know what, what, what games do you want to see? What, what books do you want to see turned into games? Okay, bye. This is the outro. End
video.